viewers you are on to bmk media production studio presenting you with another wonderful edition of this program humble beginning my name is ben millers and i remain your chief host the last episode was full of surprises and fun in fact it was quite unimaginable with our guest lives were touched and discoveries were also made we say a big thanks to Mr. Charles Ibe, our guest, the CEO of Ohiago International Limited. We appreciate you very immensely, all our extinct viewers and subscribers, for the wonderful support and the beautiful comments. Please keep it up. Keep subscribing, like and share this video with your friends and loved ones, especially those who are in dying need. Invite them to benefit from this wonderful program. Don't also forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Why not click on that red button showing below on this youtube channel so that you will always be notified anytime we have a new content cheers every rose has its thorns just as every good situation happens with adversity in life and to be successful in any business venture as an entrepreneur would demand more than just starting up new ventures every day only to expect huge amount of gains overnight. This is a platform, humble beginning. We are to look at performance and achievement in any work of life to present to our viewers successful business entrepreneurs across the globe with strong assertive who are sensitive to guide those living in the ghettos and among others who are disconnected socially, economically, politically, educationally, and psychologically. My name is Duro Oni. Uh, I'm a professor of theatre arts in the Department of Creative Arts of the University of Lagos. I have been here for some time. I've worked in the University of Lagos in the last 44 years. And uh, by the grace of God, I should be retiring in another one year and eight months or thereabouts. So that's it. I, I've been here for a while. And I've done a few things while being here. Oh, Prof. Now I can categorically call that title. Prof, I am honored to have you on this platform. You are welcome to humble beginning. Because we can see some trace of humility reflecting on your face. And that is what this program is all about. That's For accepting good. us in that simplicity, Prof, may you be blessed. May your days live longer. Amen. Thank you, Prof. Um, our viewers would want to know, how did this start? Well, uh, to make this as simple as possible, I was born in Mina. That's then Niger province, now the capital of Niger state. I went to St. Peter's Primary School, then in Mina. Then St. Peter's College in Kaduna. And then, of course, I went to the University of Ibadan and studied uh, Then it was called drama, later changed to theater arts. And then uh, I also studied in California at the California Institute of the Arts for postgraduate studies. And then eventually took a PhD at the University of Ibadan. So all through my career and my life, I've always been in the theater. And this theater started way back from uh, secondary school where we did a lot of drama for television and for the stage at the British Council. And so I've been in the same profession, so to speak, right from my secondary school days up until the university. 
that's why uh, some people who know me or see me think that I'm, I've been here almost for eternity. Hmm. You know, but hmm. as for the University of Lagos, I've been uh, here since 1976, and I've uh, worked in various capacities. Hmm. I was head of the Department of Creative Arts. Okay. At some point, I was dean of the Faculty of Arts. And then, of course, later I was a deputy vice chancellor in charge of management services. Please, can you put your hands together? I told you that this man is a life wire. In fact, he's a, another whiz, whiz kid. Prof, this is so laudable. I, I don't want to stop you there because I, do you have any other thing to tell us? Well, yes, yes. Somewhere along the line, also in my career, I also had uh, some appointments outside of the University of Lagos. In 1990, I was special advisor to the Minister of Culture, later Minister of Youth and Sports. And also in the year 2000, I was a chief executive, director, chief executive, of the Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization, CBAC. CBAC, yes. Which was then based at the National Theater. Theater and yeah. I was chief executive of the Parastatal from the year 2000 to 2006. Then, of course, within the university system, I developed two degree programs in the university. The first was uh, the Bachelor of Arts degree program in Creative Arts. Mm -hmm which has uh, the three areas of theater arts, music, and visual arts. And also, when I was dean of the faculty, I also started the Bachelor of Arts degree program in Chinese studies. So I've contributed my quota to those uh, programs. And uh, as for the creative arts, since it was founded in 1997-98 session, we have produced hundreds of uh, graduates of the department, uh, over about 100 uh, masters or 200 masters degree holders, and so far between 40 and 50 PhD holders in the various areas of theater arts, yes. visual arts, and music. music. So, you know, so that has been one's uh, career here. Of course, we've uh, had very famous students. One of them is the one asking me questions here, <laughs> Mr. And of course, some of them have become very famous, you know, Mercy Aibe. Yes, Atalade. Uh, yes, yeah, Dari Atalade. Da, yes, Helen Paul. Ella Damasos, okay. Helen Paul. Um, you know, Princess. Victoria Iyama. Wow. And quite a number <laughs> of them. So we've had uh, a good uh, team of uh, students that have uh, done us very proud. Yes. But essentially what we have tried to do is to make our graduates to be self-sufficient. You know, that they are not people who are necessarily going out to look for jobs, Job. but people that can create, create jobs, jobs for themselves and also go into partnership with themselves and then with others and then get to doing a few things. Yes, Prof. Um, that will bring me to the next question. Prof, you are sounding as if they, this were just, you know, a platter of gold. You were born into this, uh, uh, you know, without thorns. I have never seen rose, a rose without thorns. Was there any challenge at all you ever had in your own time till this project? Have you ever encountered some challenges? Well, yes, initial challenges, for example, it wasn't that fashionable in those days to say you wanted to read uh, theatre arts or drama. Yeah. You know, most people knew careers like law, engineering, and medicine. But I never wanted to be anything else but to be a theater artist. Mm. That's why I didn't waste time trying to do some other course and then finding my way back. I've been in the theater, so to speak, from the time I went to the University of Ibadan in 1971. I've been in the theater for 50 years. Mm. And if you even count uh, the period that I spent while doing some drama in secondary school, mm -hmm. then of course that means one had been in the profession for a little more than five decades. And I think the growth has been good oh. for the industry and all of that. Very awesome, very awesome. Prof, you know you have gotten to a point where one uh, will see you as a dramaturge. Yeah. Dramaturg. 
have you ever had a role model a mentor someone who influenced you at any point in time yeah quite a few people you know along the line of course there's always been a Wale Shoenka, hmm. you know, who of course was also in the school of drama after he was uh, released from the Kapuri prison. Yes. You know, and he had, of course had been there before then. Then we had a lecturer at the University of Ibadan, Dexter Lindasi from Trinidad and Tobago, who yes. was in the area of design and technology. Hmm. And then we had uh, the likes of uh, Dakwadeluba, Professor Dakwadeluba. Yes. And then, of course, the Olarotimis of this world, you know, all of them had different influences in one's career within the academic field. Yes. Then, of course, there is also from the traditional theater, you know, the Hubert Ogundes, uh, the Jola de Paul, yes. and the uh, Kola Ogumola. Those were also influences in one's uh, career area. But I am not so much of a performing artist in that sense because I'm in the area of design and aesthetics for the theater. And some of my work and studies have included uh, dramatic literature and criticism, you know, and then theater management and the rest of them. So yeah. along the line, one has uh, made some uh, little impact and influence, you know, in these areas. Thank you, Prof. You're welcome. I want to ask, what actually kept you going? What kept you going? When, when, you, when you enjoy what you do, when you like <laughs> what you do, then you just tend to stay on. And uh, it's also been, to some extent, rewarding, you know, not uh, in terms of having so much quantum of money or anything, but yeah. when you get satisfied with what you do, then you find yourself uh, really having a staying power in terms of what you do. I've enjoyed what I do. I like mentoring of students. I like engaging students. And what is important is that we tell the students that whatever level of achievement that we have made, that your own level will be greater than our own. Yes. Because that is really what it is. Yes. Father, yes. That you must also develop beyond that. So at this point, can we stop now? So I'll get back to my class for 10 minutes and then we'll get back. Please, into the can we give it to him? You see, this man is great because he is divided, um, attending to the media and at the same time having his online class. I think we will take a break and when we come back, we continue this uh, discussion. Years, we are back again. Can we put hands together to welcome uh, our prof back again from class? Please put your hands. Indeed, it actually takes uh, um, a commitment to start anything, and of course, consistency if you want to get to the end of it all. Prof, uh, your viewers would want to find out. You told us that you have a belly about. Uh, less than two years to retire from this whole system somebody will just ask do you think you have really gotten to that height where you want to be and after retiring what do you what are you retiring for do you want to do other things personally well uh after a man uh, reaches the age of 70 years, which is what I would get to in December 2022, December next year. Okay. Nice. Then that is the retirement age for university professors. So whether you are tired or you feel <laughs> still strong, that is the time to exit. So what would I want to do after? Uh, first, I have quite, uh, as you said, quite some uh, energy still going. Yes. And uh, the first thing, I mean, post-COVID, is really to uh, travel a little more. I have been to maybe, I've been to some 62, 63 countries around the world. 
but I still think that I can still do it a little more traveling. That is one of my hobbies. That is what I enjoy doing. And then, of course, I'm also working on a few more publications. To date, I have about 10 books written or edited, okay. or written and edited. And then I still have a few things. I'm working on an autobiography, and then working on a couple more textbooks for the industry. So at retirement, and without the uh, responsibilities of teaching or postgraduate supervision, then one would have a little more time also to be able to complete some of those things. Those are publications in case your viewers would want to follow up. Do you have links? Do you have... Uh... Yeah, they are available on the Google search. You can uh, search uh, Duro near on the Google platform and there are some of those books are listed. I have a couple of them here also. I mean this is uh, something in 2017. It's called Striking Expression. Yeah. Theatre and Culture in National Development. And this was published in uh, 2017. But there are about, you know. Is it more like uh, designs and... Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's a collection of uh, essays and uh, things from different areas of the theatre, culture and the rest of them. Then only last year or so we did a publication on Wale Shoinka. That this was uh, the Shoinka Impulse. Okay. Essays on Wale Shoinka edited by myself and BC Adiku. Wow. Wow. You know, so quite a number of those uh, books are still in the making. There are some that are currently ongoing and one expects to complete them. One, in fact, uh, would be presented on Oluobafemi on the 4th of uh, April. Okay. Which is barely a few uh, weeks from now. From now, from now. At the learning to mark uh, Professor Oluobafemi's uh, 71st birthday. Oh, wonderful. It was originally meant for celebration at his 70th. But COVID uh, came and turned the entire world of course, upside of course, down, down yeah. and then, you know, nothing really could happen. But we have now rejigged that and that will be published and uh, presented to be, if, you know, to the public on the 4th of uh, April at the University of Illinois, where the public is all over from 71. Thank you, Prof. Um, hello, viewers. We take another break. And uh, when we come back, we continue with the second segment of this uh, interview program. Uh, of course, we will come back and uh, expect Prof to listen to our work, our music video, and uh, make some comments about it. When that is done, we will continue with the final segment of this uh, conversation. Please stay put. Don't uh, turn off. We'll soon be back. Thank you.